double portion nation. Are you trying to make your way back to God? We're going to tell you how, and it's not going to be the way you think. Second Kings chapter 2 and verse number 9 reads like this. And it came to pass when they were gone over, that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Welcome to Double Portion Podcast. I owe my life to you in every way, for you have paid the price for me. Welcome back, everyone. So glad to have you. We're coming into the new year, and we're excited to be here. I'm back home in the studio with everyone. I'm excited about that. We're trying to work on the Greeley studio as we speak. We almost have it dialed in. So I drove all the way down here to make sure we get one last shot. No, actually, I'm working on the studio here. So that's exciting news. We are working on the studio here. We have just a little bit left. What else do we have left? Got to hang some soundboard and uh, basically move everything in. Did we, get, did we get the lighting in that we wanted? Yeah. We need more, lights. more lights. That's what every media person says. Yeah. I, just I a want, few more lights. I want lights that are not like these. I hate these prism that's lights. That's the way you're going to be. Because well, that's the only way you're going to get good lighting for <laughs> video cameras. Well, what about the old days with the stage lighting? They had different colored lights and stuff in there. Well, it'll be different colored, but... We're doing a lot of LED pink. Yeah. No pink. You have to have these, the bright lights like this, because that's the only way it'll really... I read an article where that ste- uh, that steals the melatonin out of your body and it causes all kinds of health issues. Maybe that's why so many actors are are so messed up. Yeah, I'm know. sure that's the only problem they have. <laughs> it's the lighting. <laughs> it's not all, all of them. It's all about the lighting, not the drugs, not the alcohol. <laughs> the immorality. It's just the lighting. <laughs> it's the lighting. <laughs> Pray for us, folks. We're going to have lighting in our studio. <laughs> You might now, see how us. in the world are we going to get back to this subject? We're already drifting so quickly and so fast. <laughs> so with with all of that being said, we're excited about it. We'll probably put some stuff out on social <coughs> media this week on how that's coming along. Everybody will want to be a part of that. <clears throat> we are going to be running more on our social media pages. So uh, the biggest social media page that we like to run is Instagram. Um, if you have Instagram, go follow us at <coughs> Double Portion Podcast. You'll see reels. You'll see posts of what's coming up, new graphics. Um, make sure you go and follow that right now. Stop, pause this, and go follow us on Double Portion Podcast at Instagram. And you'll see a lot of new content that's coming out in the future. Um, we're, we're excited about the new year. It's going to be good. Um, with that being said, um, we know that there is the new year is a time when people reevaluate their lives. They take a look. They consider at how are things going to get better. You know, you've heard the statement, new year, new me. And a lot of people would mock that. Um, but actually... On New Year's Day, I preached, uh, the scripture says, he makes all things new. And I think that that statement is a good statement for the new year. Because maybe you have everything together and you're doing everything right, but it's always good to reevaluate and consider how can I do things better. So really, we're going to talk about that tonight. Um, And we're going to do it in a way that kind of, is different. You you're you're gonna think at the beginning, well, we're not going there, but I promise we're gonna get there. And we have we in the studio, I'm I'm sorry to sound like this, but we have the first look at this. Because Bishop preached it Tuesday night in Pueblo. Then he drove to Greeley and preached it in Greeley. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, like we might have an altar call tonight. We really might. 
So you you don't want to miss this. But Bishop, it's so good to be back with you. I'm glad to have, I mean, even Brother Mitchell. He's just, I don't know what happened to him. He's just quiet tonight. He's starving. He's star Can't you we tell? are starving. He's wasting away right before your very eyes. But that diet, Dr. Pepper, is not doing the job. No, it's not. So we're we're glad to have you here with us. Let's go on a journey. Well, it is indeed a delight to be back with each and every one of you here in the double portion family and nation. And uh, uh, 2023 is going to be a good year. No matter what comes down the pipe, right. it's going to be a good year because God is in control and we're excited about it. And as uh, Brother Jeffrey has already stated, there are many people that are making New Year resolutions and New, new Year promises to themselves and to other people. Many of those will go by the wayside, but some people will actually find ways to to improve their life and to become a better person. And let me remind you that really the only way that that is sustainable is to include the Lord Jesus Christ That's right. and his ways and, and to acknowledge him. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. He also made a statement about making all things new, and I was reminded where the scripture says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but by the washing of regeneration and the, the renewing, renewing yeah. of the Holy Ghost. Renewing is important. In fact, they had they had feast in the Old Testament on the new moon. Yeah. And this is a whole fascinating subject because uh, that new moon was a signification and a type of God making things new in their life. Our whole mind, our whole brain, I'm studying this because this is the attraction to many addictions, is the brain is attracted to the novelty. That word novel means new. Right. And so there has to be a renewing or things just become old. There has to be a renewing of your marriage. There has to be a renewing of your consecration. There has to be a renewing to your children. There has to be a renewing. And out of this comes new ideas, new ways to express old ideas. And so this is so important. So in prayer uh, and in study, uh, just recently, I was, uh, I was praying about this new year. And I actually was studying some eschatological things in the Bible. And uh, I come across this scripture and it fascinated me, and I've read this scripture. In fact, I've memorized a huge amount of this yeah. book to memory Right. when I was a younger man. And as I began to read this again, God began to really talk to me because I know that, that watching or listening to this podcast, there are many people that maybe at one time you had a very, very close relationship with God. And... And through hurts, you know, offense is one of Satan's favorite tools to destroy people's faith. And afflictions are one of Satan's favorite tools. And both of those can cause people to think, God, you didn't defend me at this time. And, and people become offended because God didn't defend them. Yeah. And so these are... These are favorite tools of the devil and the enemy of our soul. And there are other tools that we don't have time tonight to deal with. And so one of the uh, prayers that is a, a prominent prayer of mine in 2023 is that God would restore his wayward children. The, the old expression, the old English expression is a backslider. Those that have slid back into former habits, former ways of thinking, former uh, behavior, former conversations that God has delivered them from. Yeah. And so this is a very, very uh, prominent prayer of mine that God would again reach 
to those children that are his children. And so while I was praying this, and I actually was reading this scripture in Malachi chapter 3, this fascinated me because uh, in, in the whole book of Malachi, God is actually dealing first and foremost with the priesthood. And uh, this is the last book in the Bible. In the Old Testament. In the Old Testament. Yeah, excuse me. And so this is the last book that we have before the, what they term as the 400 years of silence. Now, right. we, we, what that literally means is there was not a prominent prophet of this time. Now, now during that 400 years, there were all kinds of incredible things that were happening in the land of Israel, God's people. Yeah. But there was not a prominent name like Jeremiah or Isaiah or even Malachi, who is the last one that God uses during this time before we have what is known as the 400 years of silence. Let me ask you a question, Bishop. Yes. Because um, we hear a lot of teaching and preaching like this, but I know a, a, a vast majority of our listeners, w if given the resources, would go and study a lot of this out, like the 400 years of silence. Where, where do you read a lot about the 400 years of silence and like, you know, um, the feats of Judas Maccabees and driving the Grecians from the temple, which I'm sure you're going to get into in just a little bit. Where, where do you read a lot of that? Well, there's two prominent historians that I've read. The, the one that's most familiar with people, especially theologians is uh, the writings of uh, Josephus. But there's, I think his name is Eusebius, who I believe was a Roman historian. Am I, am I saying his name right, Brother Mitchell, Brother Jeffrey? Uh, and, and, and there was another one I can't think of. Can you remember? Did Philo write any of that time Philo, or, is it, or later? Philo wrote some of that time frame. But the most common one is Josephus, and right. one of the reasons is because Josephus was a Jew. Jew. And so he was there, and uh, and his writings are, are very prominent. Uh, what's the books that he wrote? He wrote one about war. I can't remember the name of it. I think I have it on my phone. And then he wrote another one on the history of the Jews. Well, that, I mean, I think that's enough that they can Google a lot of that. Sure. But Josephus. And it's important for us to read this kind of stuff, to understand. And... There are books that are written during this time that you can find, like if you are a Catholic, these books are still part of the Catholic uh, canon. canon. They are known as the Apocrypha. And uh, there, now these are not the holy writ right. of God. They're not recognized by even the Jews. Right as the holy writ of god uh it would be more like the jews have the torah and then they have the talmud now it got to a place during the time of the pharisees that they actually tried to count the talmud as the torah that's why jesus said you take the commandments of men mm -hmm. and make them the commandments of god the talmud was not the torah the torah is the first five books of the law and jesus said the law and the prophets which is the Old Testament. And so they tried to take the Talmud and make it part of the inspired word of God, which it was not. Right. And I'd get a huge argument out of a lot of Jews today about that because of that very reason. Well, maybe we'll come back and do a podcast on it because that's good to so, talk about all that. Yeah. Uh, and there are many good things within those, but there's also many things that are very, very it, – it's like – and I wouldn't put this in the same category as heresy, but it's like heresy in the fact that it weaves mythological happenings that are not verified right. with actual miracles. For example, in the Apocrypha, you have uh, you have stories. Well, I don't know if this is in the Apocrypha. It could be. I can't remember. But you have mythological stories. Yeah. About Jesus when he was a little boy. Right. 
making little mud ball people and turning them into people and playing with them like yeah. you you boys played with army men. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they would consider that part of the Apocrypha, but that was a part of the mythological writings of these people. I don't want to get bogged down in that, but the reason I bring that up is because even in this day and age today, you have, if you want to stray away from the real word of God, there are plenty of resources, or shall I say mediums, let me use that word medium, because it's going to fit with this scripture here in a minute. But there are many mediums that will give you plenty of license yeah. to believe something other than the Word of God. Today, the day that we're recording this, what is this, January the 6th? Uh, yes, January the 6th. January the 5th. Today is the anniversary of when they started the Golden Gate Bridge. Do you boys remember when we drove you? Uh, well, you guys were little the first time I drove you across. I don't even know if you were awake when we took that Mercedes out to Sacramento and we did a, a dad and a boys trip out there. I don't even remember if you remember that, but we drove across the Golden Gate Bridge. The Golden Gate Bridge in the early 1900s when they built it was an engineering wonder of the world. And so literally millions of tons of trucks and cars drive across that bridge every day. That Golden Gate Bridge is now one of the national parks of the United States of America. And literally millions of tons. And people don't even realize it. But for you to drive across that, even unknowingly, you have to have faith yeah. in those engineers and in those builders. And if you don't, then you won't drive across it. You'll think, oh, my God, I'll get out there, and this thing's going to fall, and I'm going to be eaten by the sharks, you know. Yeah. And, and so they had to get their figures right. Well, what is shocking is today there are millions and billions of people that put their faith and their trust in belief systems that will fail them. It's going to let them down. And this is the subtle way that Satan uses to lure people away from the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ and tells them, well, Jesus is a good guy, but there's actually a better way for you to live your life today. Well, Jesus has been tried from the history of humanity even before he was manifest. Right. He had been tried. He works. Mm -hmm. All of these other cultures and all of these other uh, ideal systems and all of these other belief systems, they haven't worked. They've failed. But Christ has, he has been prominent. And we could get bogged down here. I don't want to get bogged down here because people say, no, you know, I remember the Crusades and Christians killed. No, those weren't real Christians. That was a variation of Christianity. Right. That was not real Christianity. To find real Christianity, you have to go back to the Bible and Jesus taught that he came that people would have life and have it more abundantly. He didn't come to, te to teach us to kill everybody that we disagreed with. And so we could talk about that. We'll come historically and we'll talk about the real Christians versus those that have posted themselves as Christians. And yet they've done uh, things in direct oppositions to Christianity. So we have a, a myriad of, a jillion different ways that Satan is going to tempt young people and lure them away from God. And I believe personally, Brother Jeffrey and Brother Mitchell and Brother Jordan, that there are young men and young ladies that are listening to this podcast right now that are there. And they're looking for a way back to God. And so... In my prayer this year, reading and believing God, and I got over here, and I know that for all of the theologians that are listening or watching this, yes, I understand. First and foremost, the book of Malachi is to the, the Israeli nation and to the Jewish people. I get that. But I also know it's part of the Bible, and that 
the many promises of God are manifold. They have their initial uh, revelation, but they are also given to us, the Bible says, for our in samples and right. our examples. Yes. And they are paths for us to get back to God, not only the Jewish people. So in this, he says, behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. We know, we know originally he's talking about John the Baptist here. Yes. Uh, but there has to be a preparation in our life. And he said, he shall prepare the way before me. And this actually was quoted by John the Baptist in the New Testament. And he said, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But he said, who may abide in the day of his coming? Because initially, uh, initially everybody thinks that when he comes that he is coming in grandeur and favor and he's bestowing upon all of these people all of these benefits. But it says that when he appeareth, who shall abide? Because he's like a refiner's fire. People don't realize the, the, the biggest message that Jesus preached before his death, burial, and resurrection was repent because the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. You have to forsake your belief systems that are worldly. And you have to embrace the belief system of the kingdom of God. It's radical. Right. It's otherworldly. It's not in this world. It's from another world. And so that's what Jesus is talking about here. When we repent, we have to forsake. That's scary. Oh, yeah. You know, there's people that for generations, not only them, but their family has embraced belief systems that oh. are contrary to yeah. the word of God. So I could talk to that in that just this week. I was teaching a Bible study. Right. And you start and, and I I think it was Brother Caleb Adams. I saw him post this and it's a very good statement. <clears throat> and I, I don't I'm not gonna quote it exact, but he said when you start coming against people's belief system, you have to be careful how you do it. Because you can destroy a person. You can literally devastate them because they've built this whole in in the sense of spirituality, they've built this whole ideology of salvation on that so when you when you come against that even though you may be coming from a standpoint of scripture you have to be careful how you do that so i have i can example that in the fact that <clears throat> teaching a bible study talking about salvation and the old the old statement well my mom well my grandma well my you know my cousin uncle's brother he's a good man he's never sinned all these things that I know they're saved. But I had to simply ask the question, but what about this scripture? To the point where people become literally angry and crying at the table because you're coming against their whole belief system yeah. with the scripture and what you're saying. You have that's the repentance. You have to repent from not just sin but old belief systems and, and come out of that. Well, this is biblical. When Jesus met the rich young ruler, he couldn't come out of his old belief system. Yeah. He, he was so caught up in the paradigm paralysis that is such a major factor when you are dealing with winning souls. The paradigm paralysis that you mentioned, my mom, my dad, my grandma, my grandpa, yeah. when that is one of the keys to Satan keeping people in bondage is the emotional attachment. That, and we could get into this massively tonight, Brother Jeffrey and Brother Mitchell, because by instinct, our enemy knows that. When Pharaoh was confronted with a new belief system to setting these slaves free, he used it. He yeah. said, you can go, yeah. but you got to leave your wife and your kids and your cattle and your horses because he realized the emotional, relational attachment 
that these people have to this belief system of bondage. And he knew if I can keep these relational identities and they're not just identities, they're actually connected to these people yeah. that more than likely I'm going to get these people back after three days. Yeah. And Moses said, no, we're not leaving. The Bible says we're not even leaving one hoof right. behind. But to do that, there has to be, this is so imperative. This is why I prayed before we even, before I preached this message and before we do this podcast is there has to be supernatural power to help these people leave these old paradigms oh, yeah. of slavery. Yeah. Uh, one of the most prominent scriptures in the Bible, when I'm dealing with people in this manner, and I, I, I know we're dealing with people right now that are struggling. You're struggling. Well, brother elder, I, I know that I have to be baptized in Jesus name. And I know that I have to have the Holy ghost, but, but what about my mom? What about my dad? Yeah. All I can tell you is what Jesus told his disciples. Let the dead bury the dead. Exactly. You're not going to get to heaven off of your mom and dad's relationship. God does not have grandparent or grandchildren. When the, the Each church... person has to, has to come and find Jesus for themselves. I think that's, all, in another sense, a trick of the devil because he puts them into a place where when you're sitting at the table and you begin to talk about that, and I say, well, so did my mom go to hell? Did my dad go to hell? Yeah. You know, and it's the devil coming to them. And, it's that paradigm paralysis. And you, you've got to, yeah. goes back to, we're not leaving one hoof. you got to come out of all of that. Not one hoof will yeah. be left. Well, when you when you see the salvation plan of God, even if your grandparents or your mom or your dad were saved, which we don't know, we ain't gonna know till we get no. to heaven. But the issue is, even if they were saved, you're not gonna get there no. unless you repent and are baptized in Jesus' name and fill with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. So if you don't obey the gospel, you're you're not gonna know whether they're saved or not. <laughs> And none of us know until we get there. And the only way we can get there is we have to repent and we have to be baptized in, in Jesus, Jesus name, name and be filled with the Holy Spirit of God, according to Acts chapter two right. and verse number 38 is, which is where the Christian church started. That's actually not what we're dealing with in this podcast tonight, but, but it does come to the fact of repentance. That is the ultimate. And when Jesus begins to begins to prepare this generation. He said, I will send my messenger before me to prepare the way. And John the Baptist, his whole ministry was that of repentance. Now, when we think of repentance today, a lot of the new transliterations of Scripture and translations of the Scripture are dealing with uh, this word, and they don't use the word repentance. They use the word forgiveness. Mm. There's a huge difference between the word repentance and remission and the word forgiveness. And so when we talk about repenting, we're not just feeling uh, remorse and we're not just lamenting about the fact that we are not walking in God's ways. We do something about it. That's true repentance. Yeah. And so that's what he's talking about here. And he says, who may abide? And he said in verse number three, and he shall be as a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi. Now in the Old Testament, that was the Levitical priesthood. But in the New Testament, anybody that has repented of their sins and been baptized in Jesus' name and been filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, they are a royal priesthood according to Hebrews chapter 12. And and so uh, if, if there's going to be a restoration, and that's what this whole podcast is about, is restoring God's children back to their original position with God. And so he says that if you're going to do this, he said that I would purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer, here we go, the first thing they're going to do when they are 
back in the presence of the Lord because that's what kings and priests do is they offer the offering yeah. to God. The, the, the offering, and this time when they offer it, it is in righteousness. Verse number four, then shall the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. And I will come near to you. And this is powerful. Look what God does when we offer the right offering to God. When we offer it in a right position to God. When we are back in this only belief system in regards to salvation. Now there's other belief systems. If I'm going to be a, if I'm going to be an engineer and build bridges, I, I, I've got to adhere to some, some systems of, of mathematics and some systems of physics uh, that are that are true belief systems, but that's not in regard to salvation. If I'm going to fly a jet airplane, uh, there's some laws of gravity and there's some laws of lift and there's some laws of thrust that are great that I have to believe in. I can't just disregard that and say, well, bless God, I'll just fly this airplane any old way that I want to. Yeah. Uh, you know, so <laughs> there's, there's other belief systems, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about the belief system of salvation. Yes. This is the only way. And the Bible says, and I will come near to you and, and to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers. If we have ever had witchcraft and sorcery and bewitching in our world to lure people away from this original truth, it is today. He said, the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Galatians, said, Oh, foolish Galatians. Who hath bewitched you? Who cast a spell on right. you? What sorcerer made you believe that this system was greater than the supernatural power of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? So the church at Galatia, you know, they were they were giving themselves to amulets, seances. Our our youth are, you know, the the popular expression is, well, I'm spiritual. I'm just not a Christian. Well, I'm going to tell you something. When you're dealing with spirituality and you do not have the guideline of the Word of God, what spirit are you dealing with? Yeah. Uh, the Bible says that Satan has portrayed himself as an angel of light. He can tell you anything. And if you don't have the guidelines and the definition of uh, of true, pure, holy spirituality— uh, you can fall into all kinds of diverse temptations to where your life is so messed up. Satan can invent more ways in five seconds to mess you up for a lifetime than it will take you a lifetime to get out of it. You have to have the supernatural power. And God says, if you'll do this my way, I'll take care of these spirits that come against you. I'll take care of these sorcerers. I will take care of these mediums. Mm -hmm. I will give you enlightenment and understanding. And he says, and against the adulterers and against the false swearers, if we've ever lived in a day that is so uh, subject to adultery. And when I say adultery, I'm not just talking about sexual sin. Adultery can be doctrinally. And you think that you have what is right. And, and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, those that people cannot get out of the financial bondage, and and the only job they can find is somebody that's taken advantage of them. And, and so God said, I can come against all of this in a supernatural way that you cannot even, you, you, you will never get out of it, and, and you're frustrated with it. And he says, and the widow have we ever lived in a day? How does a widow live in this day and age yeah. with what is going on in our world? And the fatherless, we've got fatherless kids running around like you cannot believe. In fact, the last promise of God in Malachi is, I will return the fathers back to their children and the children back to their fathers. Only God can do that. And I think that in some ways that there will never be a chance for some people to give back to their father. So the Lord Jesus Christ becomes their heavenly father yeah. in a way that they never believed. That was my dad. 
Right. My dad is such a hero in my life because my grandpa was not a good father. My grandpa was an alcoholic and my grandpa abused my dad and abused my grandmother and abused his children. But the Lord Jesus Christ became a father to my to my father like nothing I've ever seen. And it's because of his passion to the Lord Jesus Christ that was really a part of me selling out to Jesus because my father became the father to me that he never had. And he didn't get that from another man. He got that from the Lord Jesus Christ himself and became yeah. the father to me that he never had. And them that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. Have we ever seen a disregard for the fear of God? It's just marginal. There are just ways that people today just tear down what is yeah. marginal and rot is right with God. And, and, and so this is going on. And the Lord said, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And then he makes this revelatory statement. Even from the days of your father, you have gone away from mine ordinances. If there's ever a day that the world mocks and marginalizes the commandments of the Lord, it's the day that we live in. And they, they make movies out of disobeying God. The whole theme of, that mu of those movies and television programs are to, to make and to premiere things that God's word opposes. Yeah. You know. And, and the Lord doesn't change just because they do that and they get the popular opinion. But I know that there's people out there that are sick of living that way. I know I talk to them every day and they say, so how do we return to the Lord? Well, this is the fascinating thing. You say, well, well, a man, it says, God said, and have not kept them. Even from the days of old, your fathers have gone away from mine ordinances and have not kept them. And then God says, return unto me. But you said, wherein shall we return? Well, I would have thought initially the first way that you return to God is crying and praying. But this is not what the Bible says. Right. All of a sudden, God goes into this, will a man rob God? This is, is almost a, 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 what they call it, a rhetorical or... Um, yeah, rhetorical question. A question. And, and they say, but wherein have we robbed thee? And God said, in tithe and in offerings. <laughs> this is revelatory. I'm thinking emotionally. Yeah. But God said, no, the first way you return to me is in your tithing yeah. and your offerings. And then he says, you're cursed with a curse. Now, some people think that God put that on them. No, their disobedience brought that curse in their life. And God is dealing with them. How many times have I taught this church that tithing is not a money issue? Yeah. Tithing is a faith issue. Tithing is way before the Old Testament law. Tithing goes all the way back to Adam. I don't have time to get into this tonight. But it yep. goes all the way back and is connected with a man's faith and his relationship in God. This is why I panic when I see people that have problems paying their tithe. I know. I, I am almost 60 years old. This October, I'll be 60 years old. I have been in full-time ministry for 45 years. That's hard to believe. And uh, the what amazes me about this is that I have never seen anybody that struggles with tithing where eventually if they don't give victory over that, they will lose out with God. And as a pastor, I panic over that. So I try to devise ways that I can creatively inspire them to realize, look, you're measly $150 a week, $200 a week, or whatever, you know, and some people, they become millionaires, and all of a sudden, they get concerned about their tithing to God. How do they think they became millionaires in the first place? That absolutely blows my mind, yeah. you know, and, and so this is a revelatory principle that God showed me that the first way that you return to God, if you have strayed away from God, is in your tithing and your offering. Yeah. And God said, that's the first way that you break the curse in your life. You're cursed. The only way to break that curse is return unto me with your tithe and your offering. 
Praise God. I well, feel like preaching right now. Preach. <clears throat> it, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of ways that we could go here, but um, let me throw out some, a resource here. If you haven't listened to it, uh, go to the Biblos Network and listen to Brother Urshan talk about this because he his revelation of tithing is so incredible to the fact and this ties in exactly with what you're saying right now to the fact that number one we have to understand that you know somebody said well i'm bringing this to god i'm, I'm giving it back to him no we're not we're not giving anything back to him the bible says the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof we're giving him we're, we're giving him what's already his okay so when you tie that to the point of the faith issue and then he also deals with the fact that it is it is in later on it talks about rebuking the devourer rebuking the devourer in our life that is our that is our our nature the human nature fallen nature of man in that we just consume everything we consume everything. It's not only us, but you got to take that all the way back to verse number five. The sorcerers yeah. and all of these different mediums that are pouring this trash in form. You ever think about that word information? You're putting your life in form, in formation. Yeah. And all of these different super natural supposedly these demonic sources these mediums we used to call mediums witches and they're i mean you can google anything you want to right now to contradict what i'm saying oh, but yeah. that's not going to bring you out of bondage oh i know for a fact there's a website called why we don't pay our tithes.com yeah and they're going to give you every reason in the world to keep you in bondage exactly why you don't need to do this and why it's all about a preacher wanting your money. It has nothing to do with any. How do they fund that website? <laughs> yeah. With ads. <laughs> Which is funny. Like you can listen to uh, that podcast, but Urshan does. And he talks about all these churches that started on the fact of, uh, you know, well, we're going to, we're going to create a church that we don't need tithe. Well, the only ones that made it were ones that had millions of views. And the only way they're making it is on ad revenue. So they're taking all this filth and trash of the world and they're using it to fund their mission. And their mission is to keep you in bondage. Exactly. And and God said, I, I've already established this principle. And it has nothing to do with funding the church. It 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 does that has everything to do with tying us to the realization yes that the lord jesus christ is the only source that we need <laughs> now he may have given us our job right but that job is not the source no the lord jesus christ is that source yes and it keeps us tied to him he gave me the health to work that job yeah. He gave me the, the the mentality to work that <laughs> job. He gave me the family that was produced because I could bring the income for that. I mean, we could just connect everything here. We don't have time in this tonight. And 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 even bringing up one website, and there's a jillion websites oh, beside yeah. that, but that is the tactic of the devil. Yeah. What in the world does this all this connection out here have to do with you getting set free? from your drug addiction and from your depression and from your despair and all of the stuff that encumbered you when you walked away from God. And and now we've got this, well, we, you know, we're going to marginalize this. We're going to we're going to turn this into logic and reason and and let's sit down and let's figure out 15 different ways how that if 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 I do this and I do this and I do this, I don't have to obey the word of God. But you're forgetting one thing, that faith and obedience are synonymous in the eyes of God. Yeah. Faith and obedience. And we see this in the book of Romans where the Bible says that uh, for they have not obeyed. And then Paul quotes Isaiah because he said, for who hath believed yeah. our report. Faith and obedience are connected here. And so, you know, my intent is not to. Initially, my intent is I don't even I, you know, I'm never going to see your money. You go to another church. Yeah. 
I'm never going to see I, what does this have to do with you paying your tithe because you're I, how many different countries over what hundred thousand downloads or close to it or whatever you know I don't know you were talking about that beforehand here all over the world many all different countries. over the world we're not going to see that here this doesn't have anything to do with you paying no. your tithe to us. This has everything to do with God getting a hold of me the other day when I was praying and saying, there's young people that are in bondage, that if they will do this the way my Bible teaches them to do this, I will set them free. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking, Bishop, uh, you know, we, we started this out talking about the new year, new me. And I'm seeing people right now that God is doing exactly what you're talking about right now in their life. They, they were a depiction of this scripture. They came to church. They were, I'm talking about messed up, tore up from the floor up. And as this, uh, in a Bible study, uh, man, there's so much going through my mind. But in a Bible study the other day, God started talking to me about this. And I didn't even intend to go here. <laughs> And God started showing me how when when we come in and we start applying these principles, it's like our life in the chaos of, of not being in orbit. If this planet went out of orbit right now, it would literally disintegrate. Yeah. And that's our life without these principles that you're talking about. But when we bring our life back into that orbit that God has intended for it, it's like God just brings it all back together. He begins to piece it. your family back together, your marriage back together, your career back together. So it's it's what you're saying right now. It's not about a money issue. God's going to take care of us. God's going to God's taking care of of uh, the ministry. It's about the principle of watching people go from where they were addicted to drugs, addicted to alcohol. I'm talking about fighting every single day with a spouse. And then all of a sudden they come and say, Brother Jeffrey, I don't, or, or Brother Elder, I don't know what's going on, but it, it's just like, like one guy told me, he said, seems like when I pray and when I go to church, everything gets better. And when I obey the Bible, everything gets better. Well, yeah, it gets better. Because it's not, it's, it's not a deal of what I'm telling you. It's what the Word of God says. Well, first and foremost, if, if there's anything you can get out of this, obeying God in your tithe, in your offering, is supernatural ordinance. Yeah. Now, think about that word. In the, in the military, what do they call the ammunition? Ordinance. And can those weapons work? Without that ordinance. No. You can have the biggest guns in the world. You can tell me how smart you are. You can tell me how great your education is. You can tell me how big your bank account is. That ain't going to give you victory over your drug addiction. That is not going to give me victory. It, it's not going to give you victory over your fornication habit. Yeah. It's not going to give you victory over the the eyes of adultery and then the depression that it causes you because you've destroyed so many of your relationships in your life because you can't control that side of your life. You convince yourself that you have all of these weapons, but you don't have the ordinance because you are not keeping the ordinance of God. The supernatural side of this that you need is the ordinance. And God said that you have gone away from my ordinance. You're trying to use, you are trying to use duds. You are trying to use weapons that have no supernatural power. You've got big guns and everybody talks about how smart you are and how much money you have in your bank, but secretly you've got addictions that you want deliverance from and you are pouring out your heart and and right now in this podcast we're giving you the revelation to the way that you return now there's other things that god's going to show you but the way that you return to him is in your tithe and your offering i know that this is the way it works i remember brother lonnie marcus coming and preaching a revival i will never forget that man preached a three-week revival on one sunday it was incredible 
But he talks about how he was addicted to nicotine and he could not get victory over it. And he was so full of condemnation, which is what sin brings you. That's why there's the depression problem among young people today is because these sorcerers and these mediums of evil spirits have convinced you that you can sin with no recourse. But remember, the Bible says that the body is not made for fornication. The the body is not made for sin. You are destroying your body when you're disobeying these commandments of the Lord. And you can you might get away with it now, but you're not going to get away with it later. You're going to have to deal with it in your mind. You're going to have to deal with it in broken relationships. You're going to have to deal with depressions and despair later on in life that you don't have to deal with young men and young ladies. Don't listen to these people that are telling you, go sow your wild oats. No. Don't listen to them. You can be free as a young person and you will have you will have the heritage of the Lord by the time you're an older person that will absolutely blow your friend's mind at high school. And, and, and they don't even take consideration of where they'll be 10 years from now, but you do. You see in vision because you have the ordinance of God. And Brother Marcus tells the story of how that even though he was under this condemnation, which God wants to set you free from, when you get full of the Holy Ghost, he'll set you free of that. But even though he's full of condemnation and he was so ashamed because of this addiction in his life, he wouldn't even go to church. But he he started giving his tithe to his mama. And in his mind, he said, if I'll start here, maybe God will set me free. And that was all the ammunition that God needed. And I haven't even got to the side of you robbing God. I haven't even talked about the the side of of how satan has made a thief and a robber out of you and and you're asking god to to heal you while you're stealing from him and you're asking god to put your family back together while you're stealing from him and you're asking god to do all of this i just read a recent article where uh america in 2022 the theft in american retail was 95 billion dollars $95 $95 billion was the theft in America in 2022. So you talk about inflation. A huge part of the inflation is because you're paying for those thieves walking into the store and taking whatever they want. Target last year lost $600 million in theft. Walmart last year lost $3 billion in theft. And it was to such a degree that Walmart just made the announcement in these areas where the thieving is so high, they are removing their stores. So maybe God has removed his store. store Because, yeah, he said, bring bring you all the... Tithe them to the storehouse, but you've removed, you don't even go to the storehouse anymore. Come on now. You're not even going to the store you anymore. You got an organ sound on that. You, you, Come on. And, and this ain't just a message. I'm telling you, I am jealous over the blessing of God that God wants to bless you with. And I am furious over the devil lying to some of you young people. And you're thinking, well, when I'm 25 years old, I'll learn this principle. No. You need to learn this principle now. This is where the blessings, the outpouring of God, you have the ordinance and the ammunition for blessing to such a degree. And you're sitting here and you're thinking, I need victory. But when you go to victory, there ain't no storehouse there because the 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 thieving was so great that God said, I, I got to I got to move this store. Yeah. I got to get this store out of but, this area. Go, go back to. And when he speaks to Abraham, he said, I will bless them that, that bless, bless you and I will curse when them. When God finds someone that that he can bless, he's going to go back to them. But if he can't, he's going to remove his blessing from them. And, and the, the, the remedy is simple. It says right here, return to me. And you're asking, how do I return? Well, I'm telling you how to return. This is the first place that you start. Go back. Go back to church Sunday morning with your tithe and offering. Put them in. Now, in our church, we walk. We don't allow the ushers to to take up your tithe and offering because the Bible says, bring ye 
bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my storehouse. We are sick and tired of having a storehouse that's empty because of thieves. Mm -hmm. And God said, if, okay, if you're going to steal from me, I'm just taking the storehouse from you. Because I'm going to find some, I'm going to take that store and I'm going to move it somewhere else where they don't steal from me. Yeah. Well, I don't want that to happen in your life. And I don't want that to happen in my life. And this is one of the first steps to repentance. This is one of the first steps to a backslider or a wayward child getting right with God. And, and you can, you can listen to, to 50,000 voices. I don't really know all of this stuff other than I'm just trying to convince you to shut those voices up because they'll tell you there's nothing supernatural about paying your tithe. Well, I just read to you there is. I just read to you where God said that I'll rebuke the, the sorcerer. I will get rid. And then he goes on and says, and I will rebuke the devourer. Even in your own life, the devourer. And that's the, the side that we can't get to tonight. But, you know, tithing is right off the top. Yeah. We don't pay all of our other bills and then pay tithe. No. That's not tithing. The tithing first, is the first fruits the of first God. Fruits. And if we went to Proverbs, it said, honor the Lord with thy first fruits, that thy barns might be filled. And we could get into that. And if you want that, come on, join our, our app, uh, CGC Pueblo. And in February, we're going to deal with that in detail. In February is always our stewardship month. But right now, I, I'm, I'm wanting God to deliver your soul. I'm trying to give you the ordinance. For those guns in your life to blow those spirits out of your life yeah. and 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 this is where you start right here but when you rebuke the devourer not only does god want you to pay him what belongs to him to bring to him what is rightfully his because the bible doesn't say pay your tithe the bible says bring me all the tithe but god wants you to to give yourself right off of the top and many of you don't know that yet because you're young but maybe some of you are listening and you've always your savings has come after you've paid all your other bills but that's not what god said he said you you pay yourself just like you pay me right off the top that belongs to you don't you remember where the bible says in first timothy or second timothy chapter two that the husbandman must be the first partaker of the fruit so you're so lost and so out of control in your life and you're flying so far out of orbit from this principle and revelation of God that, that you can't, not only can you not control the thoughts that you think and the habits and the lust that are in your life, but you can't control your finances and you're scrambling all the time and you've always got more month than you have pay, but God has a principle where he wants to deliver you of that. Yeah. And so now we're talking about that even the financial side of your life is affected by your supernatural faith in you returning to the ordinance of God. And I could go on and on and on. I'm just waiting on you guys to to put your your thoughts in this. Well, it, it, it's... We understand it. it. It's the principle of the Word of God that that works and you you know bishop you could tell the the uh the testimonies or what people would call in 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 the world the empirical evidence you know they <laughs> it's there hard. is Im immense oh. amount of empirical evidence so one of, one of the that biggest, this works it, oh yeah one of the biggest evidences would be uh I can't remember the title of the book, but it was the owner of Caterpillar, who is, it's a huge, you know, uh, heavy World equipment. World heavy equipment. Heavy equi company. equipment company, right? The owner, he's the owner. He begins the principle of paying his tithes, okay, paying 10%. And the next year that he started doing that, the next year after he started doing that, Caterpillar doubled in growth. This is a book that he wrote. You can go read this for yourself. It doubled in size. Okay, so he said, well, I can't, I mean, I can't even spend what I'm making off of this now. So he said, I'm going to give 20%. Gives 20% the next year. Well, he said 20% in tithe, but that's 10% is tithing, period, flat period. But anyway, he said 20%. I'm going to give 20%. It grew and grew and grew to the point where he's, 
now giving, I believe it was 90% of his earnings. He said, there's no way for me to live even off of the 10%. The more he would give, the more he would make. But in the world, that's, you know, you go talk to uh, experts of, you know, finances. They say, well, no, you need to put so much in retirement. You need to do this. You need to do that. The more he would give, the more he would get back. And it's exactly what the scripture says. For as much as you give, shall men give back into your bosom. Well, that just leads right into the last of this. Let me qualify this first, though, that before we get to our brother Jeffrey's talking about, we're not dealing with just money issues. Yeah. I think that if you will do this, there is supernatural power in this where God will set you free from your depression, where God will set you. Now, there's other things you got to do to obey the word of God, but this is where you start. This is where you start. God will set you free from your drug addiction. God will set you free from your marital problems. And this is the beginning of that. But he says, and this is the only place in the Bible where God says to prove me now. This is the only place in your Bible where God says, prove me. See if I will not open you. And your English Bible says the windows. But in the Hebrew, it's the floodgates. Now, I live by a reservoir. And in this reservoir, it's it's called Pueblo Reservoir. It's part of the Arkansas River Valley Frying Pan Project. It was all built by, uh, it was built by John F. Kennedy back in the 60s, and they dammed up the Arkansas River, clear up at its headwaters at Taylor, I believe it's Taylor Reservoir. They started that reservoir there, not not Taylor, Twin Twin, Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes is part of the, and no. That's on the Colorado River. I'm getting no. these mixed up. Is Twin Lakes Twin part Lakes of the... Twin Lakes is up above Buena Vista. Yeah, that's where the Arkansas River headwaters Taylor are. Taylor is on the other side. Yeah. Gunnison. And it's Taylor Reservoir. It is Pueblo Reservoir. And it's John Martin Reservoir. This was the frying pan project. But it's all on the Arkansas River from where the headwaters of the Arkansas River start up there by Taylor. Or not Taylor, but Twin Lakes. All the way down to John Martin, which is right before you go into Kansas. Yeah. And there's a huge reservoir there. And it's a storage plan for water off the Arkansas River. However, the, the laws of this still determine that there has to be a steady flow of the Arkansas River. So many cubic feet per second. So many thousands or hundreds of thousands of cubic feet per second that has to flow through the Arkansas River. So there are actually channels that allow that to flow constantly, 24-7, 365 days a year. But in every one of those dams, and I fish every one of these lakes, every one of those dams across the top of them, there are massive gates that are called floodgates that if the water gets so high that they just, it, it, you cannot contain it within the regular flow of the river. Because it's growing, the water is coming in so fast, and that lake has grown to such a degree that it will come to those floodgates, and those floodgates do not hold the water back. And those floodgates are the overflow of that river. And the Bible says that if, in, in Deuteronomy, he said that if you will keep my commandments, then I, God said, and this is supernatural, brothers and sisters. You don't command the overflow. God commands the overflow. And he said, if you'll obey my commandments, he said, I will cause the blessing to overtake you. And if you look that up, it literally means run over you, flow over you. I don't know if you've ever been in swift running water that is flowing over but that is where God wants you to live. He said, see, if I will not open you the floodgates of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you cannot even receive it. You can't contain it. Yeah. People are asking you, how is your marriage like that? How is your family like that? How are your finances like that? How are, and you're saying, I don't know. I'm just obeying the word of God. I can't, it goes back to what brother Jeffrey says. I'm just, I'm just doing these principles of God and, and this is the healing that God gave me this is the blessing that God has poured in my life 
when you're talking about that, I, I'm thinking about the the literal application that steel, though, even though it's a river, and it's flowing through, the only way for those floodgates literally on that dam to open is it has to be a blessing from God. It has to be the rain that descends from heaven, because we, as you know, we had a, a flood uh, probably about five years ago that flooded so bad it from john martin to where our farm is right now it it flooded our farm yeah which is uh probably close to probably close to 20 miles maybe a little less yeah. maybe about back 15. Up. yeah, yeah. Back john up martin is east of us and it's mm-hmm. coming back which our farm is on the arkansas river and there's a little creek that flows and that flooded all the way back up that creek even into the neighbor's property and that was a literal application of god sent the rain and it flooded everything back and that's that's in a spiritual application that's what happened god begins to the rains of blessing begin to descend upon your life and he says oh i i can't i gotta i gotta open the floodgates and boom there they go (laughs) And when you, if you've ever seen floodgates open, I have seen floodgates open. It's incredible. If there's anything in the way, if there's anything in the pathway, it's gone. Bridges, structures, they're gone. That's what happens to those addictions. That's what happens to all of those things. When God opens the floodgates of heaven, that He just blows right over them. Yeah. You talk about supernatural ordinance. And and we could get into this because I just learned this in Israel. But the only way you get living water is it has to come from heaven. It doesn't come up out of a well, out of the earth. It is water that comes down. And that's what Isaiah talks about in Isaiah 55. And we can go 50 jillion different ways. But this, I'm, I'm not trying to preach this. I'm trying to give you, these are real principles of God that are supernatural that will blast sin out of your life and blast family curses. Yeah. It will blow them out of your life and and your life and your family will change for generations to future generations that the Bible says. So I'm not only fighting for your soul, my friend, and, and family, double portion family, but, but I'm fighting for your children's soul. I'm fighting for your grandchildren's soul because if you get these principles, it will affect your life till Jesus comes. Oh, yeah. Well, Brother Mitchell, why don't you close us out this evening? Good stuff. He's already, he already knew all this. That's why he was... <laughs> Whatever. Thank you all for joining us. This has been a wonderful episode. Thank you, Bishop, for sharing this with us this revelation that god has been unfolding in your life over well you've preached a lot of this for a long time but bringing it afresh in a new way thank you for doing that thank you to each and every person out there that is listening to every one of these episodes we love our double portion nation and we believe in you all we're glad that you're taking this content and putting works behind the faith faith without works is dead so if this episode ministered to you why don't you try it out why don't you pay your tithes and keep record of what happens when you begin to pay your tithes and write us and tell us about it yeah let us know let us know what god does for you when you begin to mix action into hearing the word of god and god begins to open the floodgates in your lives thank you for joining us and we'll catch you on the next one Thank <laughs> you.